from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2020, virtual. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon CloudNativeCon Europe 2020, of course, happening virtual this year. Uh, we always love when we get to talk to the practitioners uh, in this community, so much happening in the developer space, and uh, really excited to have on the program, first time guest in a very timely topic. Happy to welcome Farbad Abulhassani, who is the back end lead for How's My Flattening, uh, which is a joint research project uh, related to COVID-19 associated with uh, the University of Toronto. Farbad, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, so, so maybe explain, how's my flattening? Uh, you know, it, the, the term flattening the curve is something that I think everyone around the globe is, is familiar with now. Um, you know, Canada, uh, you, you've got some great initiatives going, so help us understand uh, how you got involved in this and, and, and what, it, what is the project. For sure, so I'll, I'll take us back uh, to March, which now feels like years ago. Um, back in March, uh, we, we, we could look across in Europe and we saw that you know, uh, ICUs were being overwhelmed, this new COVID thing was happening, and there seemed to be nothing happening here, uh, despite the fact that we know what was going on in Europe. So this whole collaboration started, uh, it's really the brainchild of Dr. Ben Fine, who's a radiologist at Australian Health Partners. Um, and the idea was, why don't we put all the data that, that is related to COVID uh, for the province of Ontario, where I'm from, in one place, right? So for the data-minded people, uh, like a lot of people on the uh, on this uh, program here and for the data-minded people of Ontario to be able to have the information they need to make good decisions. Targeted both at the general public um, and at policymakers to really empower them with the right tools. We know the data is siloed in healthcare and we know, you know, when this whole thing started, everything was on a website, you would get a daily update, but it wasn't something that you could analyze, something you couldn't use really, it wasn't usable. So that's how everything kind of started is, what if we did something about that? What if we brought all the data in one place what if we visualized it and put all the resources in one place? And that was really this How's My Flattening.ca, uh, which is this initiative that I got involved with uh, back in March. And what we've been doing is building a number of dashboards based on COVID data that are close to real time as possible, uh, doing a number of analyses um, to answer you know, specific questions and doing deep dives into specific questions. We have a team of scientific experts who are our leadership. Um, you know, Dr. Ben Fine, I mentioned earlier, there's Dr. Laura Rosella, who's the uh, epidemiologist out of uh, the University of Toronto. And then we have Dr. Ali Vahid Asanoi, who's a data science lead uh, over at Click Health. So we got this kind of three, this uh, perfect or organization of uh, the right talents required. And we've been trying to tackle this COVID in whatever we, way we can by making the data transparent. Yeah, there have been a lot of initiatives, obviously, that have had to accelerate really fast uh, during this time. Bring us inside a little bit. How long did it take uh, to spin the site up? Uh, you know, how do you make sure you're getting good data in? Who decides you know, which visualizations? Love to hear a little bit about you know, how that has matured uh, over the months that you've had the project out there. For sure, so when we started, what people were doing out on Twitter really, where this, a lot of this activity was happening was people were grabbing spreadsheets and typing out every day uh, what was happening. And I mean, coming from, uh, I'm not by any means a technical uh, developer, that's not, that's not what I specialize in, but having some development background, it made sense that things could be done so much better. Um, so we started to build data pipelines starting in, in March. We, we had a couple of government sources that were public. It was basically scrapping uh, the government website and recording that in a database. Um, and then we started to visualize it. We're using, you know, uh, whatever we could. So we started with Tableau just because we had a few, we were trying to build a community, right? So a community of people who want to help and do this. So we had some Tableau experts on our team and our community. And, you know, that's the way we went. So we had the database, we started to connect it to Tableau and start to visualize it and start to do, you know, deep dives into analysis of it. And then the project has matured from that web scrapper ever since with you know, a more complex data pipeline, filling in data from different sources and visualizing them in different ways and you know, expanding our dashboarding and expanding our analysis. Well, the, the KubeCon show that, that, that we're here at is so much about community. Uh, obviously open source uh, is a major driver of what's going on there. So it, it, it sounded like that was, that was a big piece of what you're working on. Help us bring inside, how, how did that community build 
Um, would love to hear if there's any you know projects and tools. You, you know, you mentioned Tableau from visualization, but uh, anything from open source also that you're using. 100%. So actually, I, I, I've never been involved in open source project before this. Um, this was kind of my first attempt, if you will. Um, we, we started uh, on, on GitHub um, quite early on. Actually, one of the partners that got involved and reached out to us was Red Hat. Uh, of course, they're known for, for doing open source and for excelling at it. And we had some amazing help from them into how, how we can organize the community. Um, and we started to move the community over from GitHub to GitLab. You know, we started to... Uh, we, we, we collaborate uh, in Slack uh, a lot of times, and there was a lot of silos, so we started to break those down and move them into GitLab, and all conversations were happening in public, so it would be more, more closer to an open source approach. And honestly, a lot of the people that are involved are, are students, grad students who want to help, are people in the community that want to help, people from all kind of different backgrounds. Um, I'd say we're really bringing in, a, open source is not, a, is not a, a known concept in a lot of these clinical uh, scientific communities, right? It's a lot more developer uh, oriented, and I think it's been it's been a learning opportunity for everyone involved. Uh, you know, some things that may seem uh, kind of default or basic have been a big learning opportunity for everyone. Of you know, issue tracking and labeling and using comments and not going back into our own old ways of like emailing people or messaging people in Slack. Um, but yeah, there's been there's been a lot of tools involved. GitLab was a big one. Um, we we went from having this kind of monolith to containerizing it and using Kubernetes. Uh, of course, we're developed with the help of Red Hat. We're able to move everything over to their um, OpenShift dedicated platform. And that what that allowed us to do is really do a lot of, do things a lot better and do things in a, a bit of more mature way. Um, so that's, sorry, I, that's quite a bit of information, but that's kind of, High level, what is going well, on? Well, no, it, it, it's, it's great. We, we, one of the things we've been poking at for the last few years is, uh, you know, in the early days, you talk about Kubernetes, it was, oh, I need things at a, a scale. And, you know, while I'm sure that the amount of data and scale is important, speed uh, was a major, major piece of what you needed to be involved in and you need to be able to rally and change. So, um, can you talk a little bit more, just OpenShift, uh, what did that bring to the environment? Any aspects related to the data? Uh, that, that Red Hat helped you with? For sure, so a, a few things there. The, the one thing that OpenShift I think really helped us with was really, and I mean Red Hat helped us with generally was establishing a proper CI CD pipeline, right? So now we, uh, we use GitLab itself. We have GitLab runners that um, everyone, basically all developers involved have their own branches. When they push code, it gets auto deployed to their branch and it just made everything a lot easier and a lot faster to be able to push things quickly without worrying about everything breaking. Um, so that was definitely a big plus. Um, the other thing that we're doing with, uh, that is using containers actually, we've been working on this open data hub, which is you know, working on the, another great open source project, um, which is again, built on Kubernetes and trying to break down some of the barriers when it comes to sharing data in the healthcare system. Um, we're, we're using that and we, with the help of Red Hat, we're able to deploy that uh, to be able to collaborate between hospitals uh, share data securely, do secured analytics, and try to break down some of these silos that have gone up uh, due to fears over security and privacy. Um, so that's another uh, great example of open source helping us kind of push things forward. Well, that, that, that's, I'm glad you brought that up, the Open Data Hub, that collaboration with other places when you have data, uh, being able to share that you know, has to be important. Talk, this was a collaboration to start with, you know, what, what's the value of being able to work with other groups and to share your data uh, beyond, beyond just uh, the community that's working on it? For sure, so if you think about what's happening right now in a lot of hospitals in Canada, and I mean it's the same in the US, is everyone is in this reopening stage. We, we shut down the economy, we shut down a lot of elective surgeries and a lot of procedures. I know hospitals are trying to reopen, right? So, and trying to figure out how to go back to their old capacity. And in that sense, they're all trying to solve for the same problem in different ways. So everyone is in their silo trying to tackle the same problems in a way. So what we're trying to do is basically get everyone together and collaborate on this open, open source environment, right? And what this open data hub allows us to do is uh, to some degree alleviate some of the fears over sharing data uh, so that we're not all doing the same thing in parallel or not talking to each other. We're able to share code, share data, uh, get each other's opinions and you know use you resources in the healthcare system more efficiently because we're all you know uh, all trying to reach the same goal here um, so i imagine you've you've had a lot of learnings from uh, the, this project that you've done 
have you given any thought to, you know, once you get past the kind of the immediate hurdle of COVID-19, um, you know, what will this technology be able to help you going forward? You know, what, what do you see uh, kind of post pandemic, if you will? I think the last piece that I touched on there is a, is a big thing that I, I'm really hoping we'll, we'll be able to push forward past the pandemic. I think what, what the pandemic has shown us is the need for more transparency, more collaboration, and being able to be more agile and respond to things faster. And that's not how healthcare operates. And I think we, we know that now and we can see that. And I'm hoping this can be used as an opportunity to be able to bring people together to collaborate on projects like How's My Flattening. Um, outside of this, right, for not, not only the next pandemic, hopefully that never comes, um, but, but for other bigger problems that we face every day, uh, collaboration can only help things, not hinder things. So I'm hoping that's one big side effect that comes out of this. And I think the, the data transparency thing is, a, is another big one uh, that I'm hoping can improve outside of the COVID situation. Yeah, I, I wonder if I can ask you just a personal question. We've heard certain organizations say that, you know, years of planning have been executed in months. Uh, when I think about all the technologies that you had thrown at you, all the new things you learned, often that's something that would have taken years, but you did it in months. So how do you work through that? Uh, you know, how, how, there's only 24 hours in any day and we do need some sleep. So um, what was important from your standpoint? What, what you know, partners and tools uh, helped you uh, and, and, and the team uh, you know, take advantage of all of these new technologies? Yeah, honestly, I, I think that the team is really, really important. We, we've had an amazing set of people that are quite diverse and then usually would quite honestly never be seen in the same room together just because of all the different backgrounds that are there. Um, so that was a big driver. I think everyone was motivated uh, to get things done. What happened is when we first launched the site, uh, we you know, put, a, put together a basic uh, feedback mechanism where we, where we could hear from the public. And we got an outpouring of support of people saying that they found this information really useful. And I think that pushed everyone to work harder and, uh, and kind of reinforced our, our belief that this is what we're doing is helpful and is making a difference in, in, in someone's life. And I think everyone, that, that, that helped everyone work harder. Um, in terms of some of the tools that we use, yeah, I totally agree. I think there was a million things that we all learned. Um, and, and it definitely was an amazing growing opportunity, I think, for the whole group. Um, I, I, I don't know if there's, a, if there's any wisdom I can impart there more than I, I think we, we were just being pushed by, by the need and being driven by the support that we were getting. It was great. Yeah, well, you know, when there's a necessity to get things done, uh, it, it's great to see the team execute. The last question I have for you, you've got all this data, you've got visualizations, you've been going through a lot of things. Any, any just interesting learnings that you had or something that you, were you able to visualize things in a certain way and the community reacted uh, just uh, any, anything that you learned along the way that maybe surprised you that's a that's a really interesting question there um i i think the biggest the biggest learning opportunity or surprise for me was was how much people are willing to help if, if you just ask right um a lot of people are involved I mean, this is a huge group of volunteers who are just dedicating their time to this uh, because they believe in it um, and because they think they're doing the right thing and they're doing it for a bigger cause. And I, it sounds very cheesy, um, but I, I think that was wonderful to me to see that we can bring together such a diverse group of people to dedicate their time for free to, to do something for the, for the public. Yeah, well, and, and along that note, uh, I, I see on the website, uh, there is a get involved button. So is there anything, uh, you know, skill set or people uh, that, that you're looking for uh, further to help the team? 100%. So I, I, I think when I, every time we, we do a presentation of any sort, we always ask for anyone who's watching to just go on our site and get involved. There's a million different things that you can get involved with. If you're a developer, we can always use help. If you're a data viz person, we can always use help. If you're a designer, uh, honestly, there's a, it, we're, we're a community-driven organization. Um, and we can always use more people in that community. Uh, that's, that's the unique thing about the organization. So 100%, please do to housemyflattening.ca and please do get involved in our GitLab. Well, Farbad, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, we definitely encourage the community, uh, get involved. It, it's projects like this that are so critically important, especially uh, right now during the pandemic. Thanks so much for joining and uh, thank you for all the work you and the team did. Thank you for having me. All right, and stay tuned, lots more coverage from KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2020 in Europe, virtual edition. I'm Stu Miniman and thank you 
for watching The Cube.